Okay, hi guys, it's Ian here. Um, I just wanted to show you uh, that tutorial I mentioned I'd show you, just a little video tutorial on um, on georeferencing. And uh, what I want to use for the georeferencing, if I can just get it to settle on this screen, is I'm going to use Google Earth, and then I'm going to import some place marks into QGIS. And then when I've done that, we're going to to georeference the image. So I've just got a couple of layers that are turned on here that I just want to turn off. Now when you're exporting, if, if I can just mention, when you're exporting imagery from Google Earth, and depending on your version, you just need to make sure that the terrain is turned off. If the terrain is on, everything will be three-dimensional, and it will warp uh, portions of the, the image at certain scales. So you see I'm turning it on and off here, and if you just watch it when I turn it off, it kind of changes slightly, so so you need to make sure that that is off, so that when you do export uh, a portion, uh, it's uh, it's nice and flat, and there's no warping happening in the in the area that you want to export. Okay, so what we're going to do for this example is we're going to export uh, this portion, this image here, and then georeference that in QGIS. Uh, one other thing, uh, apart from the the terrain that you must be must be turned off, and options under the navigation tab. There's an option here which will um, automatically tilt or not tilt when zooming. So you want the, um, the, the, the program not to tilt when you're zooming. Because if, you, if it tilts, what it does is as you get closer to the surface, the ground surface, it starts tilting the image. You do not want it to do that. So just make sure that this option, this radio button here is turned off or turned on at least to not tilt. And then if it was tilting, then just make sure that you... You click on the down arrow here just to remove that tilt. And when it starts slowly rotating, if I show you here, okay, there, you see what I mean? It's tilting. So if yours was tilted already, all you do is you click on this down arrow and then it, it untilts it. And then when it's uh, stopped tilting and it's uh, directly above the the uh, the center of the drawing, then you'll see it'll start rotating like this. And then if you just want to get it back to north, you just click on your little north arrow and it sort of counter rotates that. Okay, so we're looking at Google imagery here from the 17th of February um, this year. So let's say we want to, to export this. And um, for this tutorial, I'm, I'm assuming you guys have Google Earth Pro, which is free. Um, you just need to, to download Google Earth and then use the, the Pro, uh, the, what is it, the, the key, the free GE free key, which you type in to get Google Earth Pro. Okay, so what we're going to do is create four place marks, which we'll use for georeferencing. And like I mentioned, your place marks or your co um, control points need to be uh, far apart from each other, so you can get a good georeference. So I'm going to place them in the four corners of this image. So I'm going to place the first one, and all this stuff you can ignore. This is some of my other stuff, and I'm just going to place a place mark here. I want to call it place mark A. And then I just want to change the, the icon that it's using because uh, I need to see the center of the icon when I'm georeferencing. And I'll use this little one here and then just change its scale down to 0 0.5. Should make it nice and small. And I choose a, a yellow color just to make it, it uh, easily viewable when you're, when you're using, um, yeah, the, when you're loading the raster in QGIS. Okay, so there's that one. And so we've added it. But we're not happy with where it is. I actually want it to be up here. That's the top left hand corner. And then what you can also do is just, we don't need to see the A here. So for the label, if you just change the, the scale to 0, 0.0, that uh, will drop the, the label. Okay, so that's our first one added. You can still see it there. Okay, so we're going to add three more. So that was A. This one we're going to call B. And we want to drag it up here somewhere. Say OK. And we're going to add another one. Okay, this one we're going to call C. Pop that down here somewhere. OK. And then the last one, D. And that can go down here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. OK. So we can see they're all there. They're not um, evenly spaced, but they, they're at least in the, the far corners of the, of the image. And then what we need to do is export these little um, place marks uh, as a KML to be loaded in QGIS. So what we're going to do is we're just going to 
create a new layer. So I'm just going to the top here under my places and I'm going to say add folder. I'm going to call this control points. Okay. And then I just want to drag these points which I've just created under this folder. So they're sitting now in this folder. The order doesn't matter. There we go. Now we're going to export the, the folder as a KML. So now by exporting the folder as a KML, each of these little place marks will be will come through as one point file. Okay, so we want to say save place as. And Q just reads KMLs, so let's go put it somewhere on my hard drive. Uh, again. Okay, let's just leave it in there. We're going to call it the KML. There's a whole bunch of other ones here. Control points is fine for the name. So we can say save. Okay, now that's done. We can open that in QGIS. So the last thing we need to do is just export this imagery. And we do that from... First of all, I'm going to um, turn off my table of contents. And we say, uh, can we still see my points? Let's just zoom out a little bit. I can see the point there, there. Yeah, okay, so they're still there. So I'm going to zoom out slightly and then just make sure this is rotated to north, which it is. And we say file, save, save image. And this is where you get to choose the map options. We don't need any of our map options for this particular example, so I'm just going to turn them off. Okay, so you see they've all gone off. And then the resolution I'm going to set to maximum. Now if you weren't in Google Earth Pro, you may be limited to the, the resolution that you can choose. But for this example, uh, and Google Earth Pro, this version of Google Earth Pro, we can choose a maximum uh, image uh, of uh, 4,800 pixels by 2364. Okay, so that's fairly good resolution. And then we just click on Save Image. And we can go place it somewhere. Let's call this one GE, GE Raster. And we can say Save. And it might take a while depending on your uh, the processing speed of your machine, but let's uh, let's let that thing beetle away and export. There we go. That's done. Now we can actually close Google Earth. We're no longer uh, interested in anything in Google Earth, and we can open up our QGIS desktop. Okay. Now that that's opened, we can add the KML, which is a, a vector layer. So we click on our Add Vector button. And then just navigate to the folder where I saved it. I think I saved it in working. And just make sure that you choose, choose the right file type. So it's keyhole markup language. And it was called control points. There we go. And we can open that. And there they are. And you'll see the, the coordinate reference system is, is defaulting to um, GCS 4326. And we can just enable on the tri flight transformation. Okay, that's in the right place, still there. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to activate the um, GeoReferencer plugin if it is not already referenced, uh, activated. So under the raster menu, there should be something called GeoReferencer. And I think it should be um, activated by default. But if it isn't, you just need to go into your plugins, go to Manage and Install Plugins, and then just go and find it. So you might need to type in, if you type in GeoReferencer, Okay, there we go, and then you'll see it here, and if this box is unticked, then you just need to tick that box to install it. Okay, mine's installed, so I don't need to do anything. Once you've done that, you can close this, and then you should have a little menu here with the GeoReferencer. So we're going to open up that GeoReferencer, and it's going to dock a new window into your view. And we will add the raster image that we need to GeoReference here. So we'll do that now. Click on Open GeoReferencer, and then just navigate to that image that we saved, which I called GE Raster, which is here. And we don't have to worry about the coordinate reference system just yet. And if we zoom in, so these these uh, navigation and panning and zooming tools are all just for the GeoReferencer, whereas these ones are for your main view. So we're just going to zoom into the top left hand corner here somewhere. There we can see that little yellow yellow square which I created. 
Now, the reason I chose the different icon is because I know uh, with this little square that the center of this icon is going to be there. Whereas if I'd left it with the default place mark, it's got that little pin. I don't actually know where the center of that, uh, that particular icon is. So that's why I've changed it to a square. So we can just zoom out for now. And we're going to make our lives easier by changing the, the snap settings in our project. Now this will enable us to snap directly onto these points without having to zoom in too closely. So we can go to settings to look for snapping options and then select snapping options. And we're going to choose the advanced option and check the, uh, the layer that do, if you had a number of different layers here they would all be reflected but we're just choosing the control points layer. And the tolerance we're going to make 10. And we change this from map units to pixels and then say OK. And our, our snapping options are, are set and that's all we needed to do. All right, so now the next thing we'll do is we're going to um, add those control points using this button here. But we need to first zoom in and get a best position or, or the most accurate position we can on our raster. So we're just going to zoom in a bit tighter to our actual icon. And now you're going to click and add the, the point. So if we click and add and we position our, our cursor or our little pointer in the middle of our icon and click and click a point there. Then the program asks us to add the secondary point. So what we're doing is we're saying this position on the raster is equal to this position in the actual space and time and or, or corresponds to this control point in our points layer, basically. So we're going to say we're going to choose that point from the map. And this is where our little snapping tool comes in handy. Okay, so we click to map and then you see as we get closer to the point, a little pink dot pops up and shows us that it's snapping to that point. So we don't have to zoom in too closely. We can just zoom close close enough to see the pink point. Then we click OK. And then we say OK. And there we go. A new little dot has been added to, to our raster as well as the, the map view. So now all we need to do is do the exact same thing for the remaining points. So we just zoom into the top right hand one, which is over here. Get a little closer. I'm not going to worry too much about accuracy as this is just an example. And then from map. Get close enough to your point, select it. And now we've got two control points. Okay, and then what actually happens, and I see it's not turned on at the moment, but there should be a little georeferencer view. Where is it? The panel? Okay, this is the, the ground control point table, which is off. Yours might actually be on. If you turn that on, it's what it's do, it does now is it shows you that you've added two points. So you can also select these uh, and work in them, and you know exactly what the the uh, x, y, z value for those points are. Uh, okay, so I'm going to leave mine on just so that you it's probably looks more similar to what yours is now. Okay, let's go and add the bottom left hand corner one. There it is. Add a new point from map. Is that the right one? If I just zoom to my layer extent, yes, it is. We say OK. And the last point now, my third one is added in the control points here. You, where is my point now? I don't need to zoom up, pan up a bit. OK, there it is. And we're fairly close to the middle. Select that one from map canvas. OK, so now we've added our four ground control points for this example, and that's all we're going to use. Uh, and now we just need to set to change the settings and then run the actual georeferencer. So what we'll do is we'll go to the settings uh, options, which is under settings or on this little yellow uh, cog. If you select that, it opens up this pop-up window for your transformation settings. And this is where you'll choose the resampling method. And in this particular example, linear is going to be fine. You would choose different um, transformation types depending on how many ground control points you had and whether you needed to create a world file which is just a little text file or if you actually needed to to warp and regenerate a, a brand new um, image now you'd need to do that if you had um, what do you call it a an, an, an image which is slightly warped and uh, there's a lot of distortion in it uh, in this image there is no distortion so we can go for linear and the resampling method is nearest neighbor and the target SRS we want that to be the same as our project. 
Okay, so in this example, we've got it same as our project. And we're going to create the world file, which is that little text file which will georeference it. And the last option, load it in QGIS when done. And then that'll just allow us to quickly have a look and see whether it did georeference correctly. So we can say OK. Now all we've done is change the settings. We haven't actually run the transformation yet. So then you'll do that by clicking on this little green arrow key. You select that. And it's going to ask you once again for your um, coordinate reference system. And we're going to choose the same as our view our project. And there we go. So it pops into place. So now we can close down our georeferencer. And if we just zoom into the points, you can see it's fairly close, not 100%. Um, maybe I could have taken more care in, uh, in choosing the center. But in this particular example, this is going to be fine. This is going to do us fine. So we're not going to worry too much about that. And then just lastly, if you just want to make sure that your georeferencing is in the right place, you can add another layer that you know has uh, a, a correct referencing and then just compare the two. So for example, we could maybe add the dam or something from our database. So let's browse to that tutorial folder, which was, which one was it? It was the, excuse me, the creating a layout one. I think this spatial folder had a few layers we could use. And they are, let me just make sure I choose the right format that I want to import, and it is shapefile. So we've got railway, roads, transport, water bodies. Let's go water bodies and roads, see what they look like. And just make sure they drag them on top. And just, I mean, you have a little quick look, glance at that, and you can see it's pretty much in the right place. And if you look at this, this road is, is also pretty much in the right place. Now you'll notice it's as I zoom in here, it's fairly pixelated. Now that is because we we exported at quite a, um, a a high scale in Google Earth. If you wanted this to be a much better uh, resolution, then what you could do is you could zoom into a number of you could zoom in closer, and then um, save out four different images and then restitch them together in a in an image package, and then you'd have a much better resolution. But <clears throat> for this example, I think this is fine. And that's pretty much how you would export a Google image and georeference it in QGIS. Okay, so we're happy with this. If I just show you one last thing, I close this or just minimize that, and I go back to the uh, the raster where the raster is in our on our hard drive. I'm just going to look for it quickly and just show you that it did create a world file. So it was rasters. This was the uh, the raster, and then what QGIS georeference it does is it created this little world file. And you'll see it's WLD. This uh, you could rename this to JGW if you wanted to, um, which would be a, a world file for a JPEG. But the WLD is the sort of the universal one which will work for most images. So that's that's fine. And if I just open it, there we go. That's the little text file that it created. So we've got our um, pixel sizes or our cell sizes, and then the top coordinate. And there's no rotation values. So just make sure those two are friends and they stay together and you will always have a, a geo-referenced image. So that's pretty much it. Hope it's um, hope it's been been useful for you guys. If you have any other questions uh, with regards to geo-referencing, give us a shout. And um, you would apply the same steps for, for older imagery. All you need to do is you need to have a layer that you know is in the correct place and be able to find corresponding control points on your image and your actual uh, layers and then you just like we did in that one you, you point to the control point on the image and then you point to the control point in your layers and you add as many as you can and uh, as far away from each other as you can and then you run the georeferencer and then you should be able to yeah, georeference all the imagery and it's pretty much as easy as that so I'll give it a crack um, see what you can do and if you have any questions give us a shout okay cheers